been a couple of months since I did one of these. What's up guys, Acer Thorn here, and welcome to another Elder Scrolls lore pop quiz. Last time we covered the Dark Brotherhood, one of the most popular factions in the entire franchise. I asked you guys what theme you'd like to see in the next quiz, and a lot of you asked for the Mage's Guild. I must confess, I expected there wouldn't be much to talk about with the Mage's Guild, but as I researched the lore for this episode, it turns out I was dead wrong. Much to my surprise, the Mage's Guild has a history almost as rich as the Dark Brotherhood. I suppose I didn't pay much attention to the lore when I played the games casually, since the lack of fun I was having with that guild made me not care. So without further ado, this is the Elder Scrolls Lore Pop Quiz Part 3, The Mage's Guild Edition. I suppose the best place to start is at the start of the guild itself. Before the Mage's Guild could become one of the most important magical factions of the Second and Third Era, it first had to get founded. So that leads us to question number one. Who was the one who founded the Mage's Guild? Was it A. Sire Nar, B. Fanaldil Gladrune, C. Vanus Galarian, or D. Voranil Halion? Take 10. Time's up, and the correct answer is C. There are, in fact, numerous sources which cite Vanus Galarian, or simply Galarian, as the founder of the modern-day Mages Guild, including Galarian the Mystic by Asgrim Kolsgreg, and Origin of the Mages Guild by Archmage Salarth, which document Galarian's history with the Sigic Order, his childhood where his father taught him to read, which was actually against the law for someone of his caste, which led to his lust for knowledge later in his life and a desire to share that knowledge with as many people as possible, causing him to part ways with the Sigic Order and create his own organization, which would grant admission, as well as magical equipment and spells, to anyone and everyone. So, prior to the Mage's Guild, it was generally expected of mages to set up their magical experiments in secluded areas. That way, no innocent bystanders would get blown up if an experiment was botched. However, in order for Galarian to realize his dream of making arcane knowledge available to as many people as possible, he had to set up his organization close to a large number of people. So that leads us to question number two. Where was the first Mage's Guild branch located? Was it A. Alinor, B. First Hold, C. Cloud Rest or D Sunhold. Take ten. Time's up, and the correct answer is B. As written in Origin of the Mages Guild by Archmage Salarth, he was operating out of the urban center of First Hold and there was a common, and not entirely unfounded, attitude that magical experiments should be conducted only in unpopulated areas. Even more shocking, Galarian proposed to make magical items, potions, and even spells available to any member of the general public who could afford to pay. So because setting up a magic training camp inside city limits was such a big no-no at the time, Galarian was kidding himself if he believed that he wouldn't eventually have to answer for his crimes. So that leads us to question number three. In what event was Galarian summoned by the King of Firsthold to justify the guild's existence? Was it A. The Garless Malatar, B. The Ponentate Subpoena, C. The Galarian Marshal, or D. The Charter Conclave? Take 10. Time's up, and the correct answer is D. This trial, while well documented, went without an official name for much of the Elder Scrolls franchise's history. But in 2014, The Elder Scrolls Online was released, which contained a book found only in one location in the entire game called Kinlord Rillis and the Mage's Guild by High Inku. This guy. Which, for the first time in the franchise, 
referred to this trial as the Charter Conclave. So after Galarian received license from the King to set up the Mages' Guild, the first order of business Galarian had to address was the Guild's security. After all, when the King agreed to allow this to happen, surely this was going to be an unpopular decision, one that would incite more than a few lynch mobs who felt compelled to take the law into their own hands. So that leads us to question number four. What group did Galarian form to protect the guild? Was it A, the Order of Diagna, B, the Order of the Eye, C, the Order of the Hour, or D, the Order of the Lamp? Take 10. Time's up, and the correct answer is D. The Order of Diagna is a religious order in Hammerfell in the Second Era, dedicated to the service of the Red Guard Goddess of the same name. The Order of the Eye was a sect of the Mage's Guild set up in order to investigate the cause of and find a solution to the Plane Meld, the in-universe name given to Molak Ball's invasion of Tamriel that serves as Elder Scrolls Online's main quest. The Order of the Hour is a knightly order which has dedicated itself to the service of the Chantry of Akatosh, and is one of the oldest knightly orders in Tamriel. Meanwhile, the Order of the Land was formed by Galarian one year after receiving license from the King of Firsthold in order to protect the newly formed guild. Of course, all good things must come to an end, and in 2E578, Galarian would be forced to temporarily disband the guild, so this leads us to question number five. What event forced a temporary disbanding of the Mage's Guild in 2E578? Was it A, the Varen Rebellion, B, the Soul Burst, C, the Second Akaviri Invasion, or D, the Secession of the Gold Coast? Take 10. Time's up, and the correct answer is B. Immediately before the events of Elder Scrolls Online, Mana Marco, the King of Worms, had convinced a non-Dragonborn Emperor to modify the ritual of lighting the dragon fires in order to give himself dragon blood. This, however, turned out to be an act of treachery and deception, and this violated the pact between the Dragonborn Emperors and Akatosh, which kept the Plain of Mundus safe from Oblivion invasion. The result was a giant explosion of purple arcane energy, followed by Molek Ball initiating the aforementioned plane meld. Not yet catching on to the fact that Manamarco was a dirty, dirty liar, Manamarco further convinced Emperor Varen Aquilarios that the nearby Arcane University was responsible for the explosion, causing Aquilarios to banish the Mage's Guild from the Imperial City. So when the Mage's Guild was expelled from the Arcane University, the Emperor obviously needed some people who understood magic to come in and try to restore order after the Soulburst caused the Imperial City to descend into chaos. So that leads us to question number six. Who replaced the Mage's Guild in Tamriel after the Soul Burst? Was it A, the Sigic Order, B, the Synod, C, the College of Whispers, or D, the Fellowship of Anchorites. Take 10. Time's up, and the correct answer is D. After Mana Marco persuaded Emperor Aquilarios to ban the Mage's Guild, he subsequently set up a faction known as the Fellowship of Anchorites, which was essentially just his existing cult, the Order of the Black Worm, just with a name to create the illusion with the public that this isn't just a shameless, evil necromancer group. So after that little mishap in communication was cleared up, Galarian was allowed to bring the Mage's Guild back to the Imperial City. Of course, that was only the beginning of Galarian's woes with the Guild, as soon after that, different cliques and factions within the guild started going at each other. So that leads us to question number seven. What did Galarian do to combat the political infighting in the Mage's Guild? 
Did he A. Expel the dissidents from the guild, B. Resign from the guild in protest, C. Perform the Black Sacrament on his naysayers, or D. Frame his opponents for crimes? Take 10. Time's up, and the correct answer is B. As is written in the final paragraph of Origin of the Mages Guild, as Venus Galarian himself said bitterly, leaving Tambrael to travel to other lands, the Guild has become nothing more than an intricate morass of political infighting. So with Galarian's resignation, the Mages Guild would eventually pass through one leader after another, eventually reaching the Archmage that we, the audience, have directly interacted with, as he was the Archmage during the events of the Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion, Hannibal Traven. So that leads us to question number eight. When did Hannibal Traven become Archmage? Was it A, 3E398, B, 3E431, C, 3E432, or D, 3E433. Take 10. Time's up, and the correct answer is B. Now granted, we have never been told the exact year when Draven became Archmage. However, in Oblivion's Mage's Guild Charter, it states that Traven issued the decree that forced us to get recommendations from the local guild halls to gain admission to the Arcane University in 4E-431. So this means that answers C and D are necessarily off the table. Meanwhile, 3E-398 was one year before the downfall of Jagar Tharn and the end of the Imperial Simulacrum. And it seems highly unlikely that Jagar Tharn would have allowed someone as noble as Hannibal Traven to become Archmage while under his regime. So while the exact date of Traven's ascension may be ambiguous, a well-read Elder Scrolls lore buff can use process of elimination to realize that answer B is the best choice given the four choices we have available. Of course, Traven didn't just show up at the Mage's Guild and suddenly become Archmage. What is he, the player character? Obviously, he started at the bottom and worked his way up. So that leads us to question number nine. What was Hannibal Traven's post before becoming Archmage? Was it A, leader of the Bruma Guildhall, B, member of the Elder Council, C, leader of the Anvil Mages Guildhall, or D, Leader of the Breville Guildhall. Take 10. Time's up, and the correct answer is C. In the Anvil Mages Guild, if you speak to Mark Gillette and ask him about the city of Anvil, he will say this. Carahill inherited the Anvil Mages Guild chapter from Hannibal Traven, the Archmage. She runs a clean hall, just like Traven did. So either Traven was Carahill's predecessor, or Carahill inherited ownership of the Guild Hall in Traven's will, and the latter doesn't make any sense. So when Traven became Archmage, he introduced quite a few extremely controversial new bylaws for the Guild. One of them was the aforementioned rule that new students to the Arcane University had to obtain recommendations from all seven local guild halls, which anyone who played Oblivion Mages Guild will tell you is a pain in the ass. But the new reform that caused the most guild mages to resign in disgust wasn't the recommendation system, it was the ban on necromancy. So to justify his controversial stance on necromancy, Traven published a book where he argued his case, so that leads us to question number 10. What book did Hannibal Traven publish to justify his position on necromancy? Was it A. Necromancer's Moon, B. Necromancy in Modern Tamriel, C. 
Necromancy the Great Debate, or D, the Black Arts on Trial. Take 10. Time's up, and the correct answer is D. Necromancer's Moon actually provides step-by-step -step instructions on how to create a Black Soul Gem. Necromancy in Modern Tamriel discusses the rise of the Order of the Black Worm as of the events of Elder Scrolls Online and is largely obsolete as of the events of Oblivion. Necromancy The Great Debate is, again, a book found exclusively in the Elder Scrolls Online that really serves as little more than one person's online vlog rant about Galarian's ban on necromancy rather than an actual intellectual defense of the practice. Meanwhile, The Black Arts on Trial was published by Hannibal Traven, where he summarized the arguments made by two experts on the subject that he consulted before coming to his decision. So that concludes the Mage's Guild Lore Pop Quiz. So how well did you fare? Did you get 10 out of 10? Let me know down in the comments. And also let me know what other themes or topics you would like to see covered in other Elder Scrolls Lore Pop Quizzes. So if you liked this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Also, be sure to check out more of my video game lore and story analysis videos by clicking on the end screen element you see here. In the meantime, however, I am Acer Thorn. And I will see you guys later.